In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to complete the square. It sounds much more complicated than it is, and I'm sure that by the time we're done, you're going to have it all figured out. So first of all, why do we want to complete the square? Other than the fact that your teacher wants you to do it. You want to complete the square because you want to be able to find the vertex of your parabola or the maximum or minimum values of a quadratic. So when I look at this equation here, I have a quadratic x squared plus 4x that I could factor. You know how to do that by now, but I want to get it into this format. I want something in brackets squared. Now in this case for this equation, the a is a 1. So we'll do some in a little bit uh, that will have an a value. But right now, this is just a 1. So I'm just trying to get it into x minus a squared plus k format. So recall that what we have here in the brackets would be something like me telling you x plus 1 squared. And if you squared that binomial, remember square twice the product squared. So you get a trinomial. So in order for me to get this into this format, I need this value here to make a perfect square trinomial. This is not a perfect square trinomial, right? It's just a nice little quadratic. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I'm not sure if you're familiar with algebra tiles or not, and I'm not a huge fan of them, but certainly for completing the square, they make an awful lot of sense. So let's just do a little review up here on what algebra tiles look like. So you had little tiny, if you've never seen this before, it's not a big deal. It's really simple. You had little tiles like this that were units. You had longer tiles like this that we called X's. So I'll put X here. I'm just going to put a one on this one. And then you had square tiles like this that were your X squared tiles. So if we look at this equation here, I have 1x squared and I have 4x's. So I made a little template here. So in class you would have had a little plastic um, template, like a little plate that you put these tiles onto. And what you're trying to do is you want to make a perfect square out of the tiles that represent x squared and 4x. So this one, I'll just write them really small. So I have an x squared and I have four of these, right? And there we go. So I'm gonna place them onto the template so that I put the x squared in first because you always have to put the one with the two longest sides. So this one has long sides, so it has to go nice tight into this corner. And now I have four x's that I want to space evenly because I'm trying to make this into a square. So if you look and you take your X's. I'm going to put half of them here, so I have two X's there, and I'm going to put two X's right here. So now you see I have my X squared, I have one, two, three, four X's, and in order to make this a complete perfect square, I need this many. I need four units. So once I do that, you see how this is now a perfect square. So to my little equation here of x squared plus 4x, I'm going to, I'm going to write it out again here because I kind of put something in, in my way. So if I add 4x's here, 4 units, sorry, plus 4. So I did x squared, here's 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, and 1, 2, 3, 4 little units. So I'm adding 4 units. But in order for this to be equal to the previous equation, I can't just add 4. That would be like me saying 2 is equal to 6. I can't do that. But I can say that 2 is equal to 2 plus 4 minus 4, right? So if I add 4, I also have to subtract 4. And so that really negates me adding it, right? I still have the equation I started with. But what I do have now is I have a perfect square trinomial right here. And that's what this little drawing is emphasizing. I have a perfect square. So how do I write that in this format as a binomial squared? Well, if you look here, I have an x plus 2 
and I have an x plus 2. So this is x plus 2 squared. Now you could have factored that using what you already know, multiplies to 4 and adds to 4, 2 and 2, x plus 2 times x plus 2 is x plus 2 quantity squared. And I still have this minus 4. I have to keep the minus 4 there because if I expanded this, I would get this line, right? Minus 4 gets me right back to this equation. So I have not changed the equation at all, but I now have my quadratic in vertex form, and I can tell you what the vertex is. The vertex is minus 2, minus 4. Okay, so that's why you want to complete the square. Ta-da, that's the lesson. Let's do some more examples, and I'll do two more easy ones where the coefficient is just 1, and then we'll move on to two, three harder ones where it isn't 1. So you get a good, a good range here. Okay, so now I have x squared minus 6x. Don't worry about the minus. That just means this sign in here, right? This sign in here is going to be a negative. So I'm going to represent that on my little template over here. So I have an x squared so right in here. So this is x squared. And then I have three x's. They're negatives. That's okay. So I have three there and I have three here. One, two, three. Could have made them a little bigger. So if I put three in there and three in here, how many do I have to add to make it a perfect square? I'm sure you're saying nine, right? See, there's nine little pieces in here. So I have to add nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so with my equation here now, I'm going to say this is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 little baby tiles. But to do adding 9 means I also have to subtract 9. Okay, so I haven't changed the equation. But now I have a perfect square trinomial right here that factors to x minus 3 squared. And I still have this one, minus 9. Okay, so vertex is 3 and minus 9. Vertex 3 minus 9. And that's the whole reason we're completing the square to find that vertex value. Okay, so now we're going to do one where we have another number in it. We have a minus 8. So I was telling my class that anything past the x is not invited to the party. These are the two we want to use to make the perfect square. So I'm just going to put a little box over these to tell you that. I'm, I'm just going to ignore this. I'm not going to to delete it, it's still there, but I'm just not going to use it when I'm making my, whoops, when I'm making my perfect square. Okay, so let's make a perfect square out of that one. So I put in my x squared, and how many pieces do I have? I have six again. So I'm going to put, oh, I guess I should have finished this in the end here. This is an x, and these are each minus threes, right? That's why we got the minus, so these ones, Sometimes um, you'll have them colored in your, um, like you have blue tiles and red tiles. It doesn't really matter because I'm sure you would know how to get to that anyway. Okay, so this one, I have six again. So I'm going to put three here. One, two, three. And I'm going to put three this way. One, two, three. And I'm going to, this one's a little more clear to see. There. So again, I have to add nine. So plus 9, and I'm going to subtract 9 to keep it equal. So I write it out. x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9. This one, bring it over here. We still, we don't throw it away. Minus 8. Now you look for your perfect square trinomial. And that's why you add it first, right? Because in perfect square trinomials, this value, the last value of your trinomial, is always positive because, remember, square twice the product square. So no matter what it is, this one has to be positive. Okay, so now I'm going to make my perfect square here. I'm going to finish off. I have x minus square root of 9 is 3 squared. 
and then I combine these two, minus 17. So that gives me a vertex of 3 and minus 17. Ta-da! Wasn't that easy? Okay, now let's talk just for a second about algebraically what we're doing because obviously you're not going to be wanting to draw little algebra tile pictures of completing the square every time you do it and if you're doing this at, when you get to university the prof's going to say oh my goodness really still it's a great tool and I'm not putting it down it's a great tool to figure out how this works but now we're going to talk about it algebraically so what did we do for each of these equations, we took half, and I'm going to write it in pink here, half the coefficient, you know what the coefficient is? That's the number in front, coefficient of x and squared. Add it, subtract it, and in a minute we're going to say take it out of the bracket half the coefficient of x squared, add it, subtract it, complete the square, complete the square, and combine last two terms, if there are two, if you have two. If you only have one, then you don't have anything to do, if you have two. Because in this one we had two, this one we didn't have two, right? Because it didn't have any term after this one. Okay, so let's think half the coefficient of x squared, add it, subtract, take it out of the bracket. I remember teaching that to a class and uh, had a couple of kids that wanted to make it into a song. So maybe you might want to do that when you're bored. Because you're always bored, right? Okay, now we get into the harder ones. What happens if the coefficient is not one? Well, that's okay. We'll deal with it. And how we're going to deal with it is we're going to, step one, um, we're going to factor, your favorite word, factor the coefficient of x squared out of both the x squared and x terms first. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. Leave the constant alone. Leave constant alone. It's not invited to the party, the completing square party. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to divide each of these terms by 3. So I take out a 3, I put a bracket. Now you know what this 3 is? That's your a value, right? You just found the a. So x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, so everything's good except we haven't completed the square yet. So this is like, now we go back to um, our algebra tiles. Maybe I'll just draw this one because I want you to see one other little thing. So I'll make a little template here. And I have 1x squared Here's my x squared, and I have minus 4x's, so I have 2 here, 2 here. And I'm going to add 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. That makes a perfect square. Look how lovely it is. Okay, so this is still inside the brackets, right? So I do x squared minus 4x, add it, subtract it, plus 4 minus 4. Close the bracket, minus 5. Okay, so I took half the coefficient of x and I squared it. So half of 4 is 2 squared plus 4 minus 4. Now I'm going to complete the square. But what I've really done here is I had 3 of these brackets, right? I had this times 3. So when I complete the square, which is just using these three little terms here, to make a perfect square, I have to take this other term out of the bracket. Let's see if I can find a nice color for you here. I have to take this out, which means I had three minus fours, right? Three minus fours. So plus four, um, 
I'll write it like this, plus four minus four. That's what we did. Here's the four we added. Here's the four we didn't. It has to be multiplied by three to give me minus 12. Where does that go? Okay, let's put it in the equation here. So now I have equals three. I complete the square with this. So x, this sign, minus square root of four, two squared. And now I'm going to pull out that three times minus four is going to be minus 12 minus five more. Minus 12 minus five. I, go, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's a huge snowstorm going on and it happens to be May today. It's so depressing. Okay, stay at home, stay safe. Minus 12, minus seven more, minus 17. There you go. Okay, so the, your vertex, vertex is two and minus 17. Always state the vertex afterwards, it gives you good practice. Okay, let's do two more and then we're going to call in a lesson. And maybe the snow will stop. Okay, so factor the coefficient out of the x squared and the x terms. So that means, let me get some more colors going on here. So these two, those are the two I'm going to work with. This guy, it's very sad because it doesn't get to come to the factoring party. Okay, so let's go. We pull out uh, two. Two out of the first two terms, x squared plus six x. Close the bracket and plus seven. Remember this plus seven still has to be there. Okay, so now I'm going to take um, half the coefficient of x and square it. So two, half the coefficient of x. What's half of six? Three. Square it, nine. I add nine, I subtract nine, I close the bracket, and I put the plus seven out here. Okay, so now to complete the square, I'm going to use these three terms. That makes my perfect square trinomial. And I'm going to take two times minus nine and take it out of the bracket. Okay, so we're almost done. So it gives you two x, the sign is plus, the square root of nine is three. Don't forget your squared here. I take out two times minus nine is minus 18 and add seven. And there we go, we did the job. X plus three squared minus 11. Vertex minus three, minus 11. Isn't this magical? It's not so hard. And we used to have to have our students do ones with all kinds of fractions in it, and that's when it got a little more confusing. Okay, so I don't think I need to draw you this anymore, right? You've got it all figured out. So um, maybe just some words to go with this, and then we'll do the last one. So factor the coefficient of x out of, coefficient of x squared out of both the x squared and x terms first, leave the constant alone. Then you do half the coefficient of x, half the coefficient of x, well, I almost said the wrong thing, x squared, comma, so there's a comma here, half the coefficient of x, I'm going to put a little wiggly around it now, half the coefficient of x squared, add it, subtract it, Take it out of the bracket. Okay, so that will help you to remember half the coefficient of x squared, add it, subtract, take it out of the bracket. Okay, memorize it. Okay, here we go. Last one. Okay, we have a negative sign here. Do negative signs make you feel nervous? They should. Make them. Make them make you feel nervous because then you'll be more attentive. You take out a minus 5 out of the first two terms. Factor the coefficient of x squared out of both the x squared and x terms first. So that's these two, blah, 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 right to there. So I take out 5 and I have x squared. Now I took out a negative 5. Negative divided by negative is a positive 12x minus 3. Okay, that's step one. Now I take 
half the coefficient of x and square it. Why are we taking half the coefficient of x? Do you, have you got that figured out? Because up here, look what we put two here. Half the coefficient of x, so the coefficient of x was four. Half of it, one, two, one, two, squared it, gave you these numbers. Okay, so that should, that should make sense to you by now, right? Half the coefficient of x, after you factored it, half the coefficient of x, half four is two, squared, add it, subtract it, take it out of the bracket. Okay, here we go. Half the coefficient of x is 12 divided by 2 is 6. Square it. Plus 36 minus 36. Close the bracket. Minus 3. Now complete the square with the part that gives you a perfect square trinomial. And again, those are your, you have to add it first. That's why in my poem I say add it, subtract it. Because you have to add. Add first. Right? Very important. Okay, so what do I have here? I have x. I have a plus. I have the square root of 36, which is 6 squared. Okay, now I have to take this out of the bracket. So I need to know what minus 36 times 5 is. Can you do that in your head? 36 times 5, that's what, 180? I hope I'm right. Okay, plus 180. Y plus, negative times a negative is a positive. And minus 3. Let me just bring that up here. And we're done. Minus 5. X plus 6 squared plus 177. Vertex. Minus 6 and 177. Wow, that's really high, isn't it? Now, you might want to take another little thought about that because it's up high, but this is down, concave down, so your parabola is going this way, and it's vertically stretched by a factor 5, and you went over 6 units. So, yeah, it's going to be up really high, and that's why it's 177. Okay, now, there is another way to get into vertex form, and we will look at that when we get into the next section after we've done a little bit of... Um, Finding the roots of the quest, the the fact, the roots of the equation. Okay, I'm not going to edit that out. Okay, hope that helps you out, and you're excellent at completing the square. Now practice it again. Write them out. Do them a second time. Show me how smart you are. Give me a thumbs up. Have a great day.